if you are new to this channel please subscribe by pressing the subscribe button and then click on all to get notifications of all new videos hello everyone and welcome to today's video today i'll be explaining you laser beam machining in quite detail so we'll be seeing all the salient features then types of laser beam machining then i'll be explaining you the complete working setup of laser beam machining highlighting all the important functions of each and every component of laser beam machining then we'll see what is the working principle of laser beam machining followed by advantages disadvantages and applications of laser beam machining and do watch the video till the end you will definitely find it very informative so without wasting any time let's get started now let's see the salient features of laser beam machining. Laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. It's unconventional machining process that uses these pulsed lasers to cut the material or to machine the material that is called as laser beam machining. There are certain salient features. First is it is an unconventional machining process. There is no direct contact with the workpiece. Second, it is a low cost machining solution. Third, in laser beam machining, material is removed by converting electrical energy into narrow beam of light and focusing it on the workpiece. High energy density of the beam is capable of melting and vaporizing all type of materials and it is suitable for both metals and non-metals. And a thin heat affected zone is formed. So, the heat affected zone, it is quite narrow and that is kind of an advantage that we will see later as well. Now, let's see the types of laser beam machining operation. So, depending on which type of crystal we are using to produce the laser, the type of laser beam machining is categorized into five. So, first is NDYAG, which is the most popular one. NDYAG crystal is the neodymium doped yttrium aluminium garnate. Second is calcium fluoride doped with neodymium. Third is glass doped with rare earth metal. Fourth is man-made ruby. And the last one is carbon dioxide gas working principle. So, last one and second last, these two are not commonly used. Most popular are the top three and the first one, NDYAG is the most popular out of all these. Now, let's see the individual components of laser beam machining system and I'll be explaining you using the diagram and then explain the individual functions as well of all these individual eight components, why they are needed and then we'll see the actual working principle. So, first one is the laser tube consisting of the crystal with suitable doping. So, already we have seen five type of laser beam machining depending on which type of crystal we are using. So, most popular is NDYAG type of crystal that we will be putting inside a tube. Second is a pair of reflector, both end of the tube that will be having some reflectors. Third is the flash tube or the lamp. This will be filled with xenon or any other inert gas. Fourth is amplification source. Fifth is power supply unit. Then sixth is capacitor. Seventh is cooling system and lastly the lens. Now, let's see the diagram of laser beam machining working setup. So, first you see the right side image. This is the complete working setup of laser beam machining operation. At the very bottom, this is the workpiece on which the actual laser will be striking and it will be machining the surface. And this is the lens that will be placed at certain standoff distance. This is that standoff distance. This is the point where the laser will be striking and this convex lens will be converging that to a common single point and this convex lens will be increasing the overall intensity of the laser that will be striking ultimately the workpiece. Next we see the housing. This is the complete housing that we are calling it as tube or the lamp. So, this is the inert environment inside this we will be having xenon gas or any other inert gas filled and this complete housing is known as we can say lamp or tube and inside this lamp there is a spiral kind of a structure that we are calling it as flash tubes and at the center of this flash tube we will be having the actual crystal that will be producing the laser here that is marked as ruby rod now we can see the left side image as well herein the flash tube is shown and in, at the very center we will be having the actual crystal and at the complete surrounding this will be the housing or the lamp here we are seeing two other electrical components as well. First is the power source. So, this will be providing the overall electrical power to the complete system. And this is a switch which will be connecting and disconnecting this power source to the complete system. Next, we see this capacitor that is a programmable capacitor which will be providing the suitable charge to these flash tubes which will be ultimately energizing the ruby rod and produce the lasers. Now, whenever the capacitor will be providing the charge at that certain instant only, laser will be produced. So, this capacitor will be ultimately controlling when we want the machining to actually happen. Now, let's see the individual functioning of all the components. First is the power source. So, power source will be ultimately responsible for providing the high voltage power input to the complete system and that will be ultimately charging and discharging the capacitor which will be ultimately governing the overall initiation of the laser pulses. 
so power system is the most critical component here second is the capacitor capacitor will be storing and releasing the energy during charging and discharging phase so it will be operating in kind of a pulsed mode and it will be programmed next is the flash lamps flash lamps will be producing intense white light that is converted into a coherent high intensity beam and these will be filled with inert gases like xenon this is to ensure that air molecules don't interfere next is the reflecting mirror so reflecting mirror are two types internal and external internal are also known as resonators and these are crucial for generating maintaining and amplifying the laser beam so internally when the laser is generated initially that will be striking back and forth between these two internal reflectors and get amplified and the outer one that will be actually guiding the laser light towards the workpiece last is the lens this lens is actually a convex type of lens that will be ensuring that all the lasers converge to a single point and then strike the workpiece now let's see the laser beam machining working principle so overall to understand laser beam machine we have to understand at the electron level and overall laser beam machining is a technology that uses laser as the primary source and ultimately involves the conversion of electrical energy to light energy and finally into thermal energy but how that energy conversion happens that we have to see so let's see at the atomic level electrons orbit around the nucleus in specific energy levels with each orbital associated with distinct energy states at absolute zero temperature electrons occupy their lowest potential energy known as the ground state however as the temperature rises electrons can absorb energy and transition to higher energy states to electronic vibration now if you recall in the diagram as i have already explained there is a crystal at the very center of the flash tube electrical energy that will be moving from capacitor to the flash tube and the flash tube is covering the complete crystal throughout its periphery so the temperature when it is increased in the flash tube due to the electrical energy getting converted into thermal energy will be transferred from the flash tube to the crystal and ultimately when the electrons those are there in the crystal those will be getting this kind of high temperature they will move from ground state to the higher energy state and they will be releasing photons in the form of visible light that we are saying as laser and this phenomena is known as population inversion wherein electrons when they get excited by getting the thermal energy those will be moving from ground state to higher energy states releasing photons in the process these photons all together form the light source visible light source known as laser so laser ultimately initially when it is generated further amplification also has to be done because we have to use it for machining operation so initial laser again it will be striking back and forth between the two reflectors those are at the two ends and amplification will be happening within that system itself lamp tube itself and this further final laser that will be passing through the convex lens and get converged and it will be striking the workpiece where the intense heat or the intense thermal energy will be produced that will be melting heating and vaporizing the material ultimately causing the material removal now let's see the process parameters of laser beam machining so material removal rate it is influenced by the type of the wavelength ultimately the laser beam that is generated will have different wavelength depending on which type of crystal we are using so wavelength and the type of crystal these two are the main critical parameters that we can control in order to produce different type of lasers that will be used for different type of applications now let's see the advantages of laser beam machining first is it can machine even those materials which are difficult to machine conventionally and very hard and abrasive materials can also be cut no tool wear because the tool is not striking the workpiece it is very cost effective and flexible process it gives very high accuracy and precision because laser ultimately can be controlled to a very minute level since there is no tool here so we can avoid all the lubricants and it can operate in any environment so no need of any specific inert environment for machining to occur material removal is independent of hardness so any type of hardness can be easily machined using this unconventional laser beam machining operation next is laser head need not be in close proximity to machine so that it can be used to machine certain areas which are difficult to access by other methods then next is can machine heat shock sensitive materials like ceramics heat is focused to very small area so the heat affected zone will be very narrow doesn't cut the work table if it is made with reflective materials like aluminum last is complex profiles and intricate shapes can be cut using laser beam machining now there are certain disadvantages or limitations of laser beam machining as well now we'll see that first is high capital investment and operating cost so initial setup cost itself is very high 
it is recommended for certain specific applications only because the production rate is very low cannot be used comfortably for high heat conductivity and light reflecting materials so if the material itself is very high conductive so the heat it will be getting transferred or dispersed while striking so those are very difficult to machine skilled operators are required system has low efficiency next is pulse reputation is lower than electron beam machining because here charging and discharging is happening through a capacitor and that will be having certain time lag as well next can't machine thermally conductive and reflective materials like aluminum and copper alloys irregular machined area due to off axis modes minimum diameter depends on the divergence and ultimately that also depends on the type of convex lens if we want very narrow then the lens will be of very high supreme quality that will further add up the cost output energy cannot be precisely controlled now let's see the applications of laser beam machining it is used for precision micro machining on all micro electronic substrates such as ceramic silicon diamond and graphite so which are very hard to machine using conventional methods we can easily machine using laser beam machining operation then cutting scraping and drilling all type of substrates trimming hybrid resistors trace cutting on semiconductor wafers and chips as those are very fragile and very thin so we need specific unconventional methods like laser beam machining or electron beam machining to machine wafers and chips of semiconductors make complex profiles in thin and hard materials like integrated circuits and pcbs so again the same reason machining of mechanical components of watches which are very small in size so we need a specific machining which can go up to that particular level of machining it is used extensively in the automotive and electronic industries it is specifically suited to make accurately placed holes so if we want to make certain precision holes in certain electronic components or electronic wafers or ceramics then we are using laser beam machining lastly fusion and welding of refractory materials so this covers our lecture on laser beam machining hope you have found the video helpful and informative i hope you have found the video helpful please do like share and comment do check out our website and also please check out all the links in the video description if you are new to the channel please do consider subscribing and press the bell icon as well also you can support the channel by joining the channel membership till next time take care bye